uh, let us continue. So our next speaker is Aida <coughs> Abiat, also from the Netherlands and from Belgium, as I can see. So you represent three universities at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Sasha, for the introduction. I would also like to start thanking the organizers, in particular Elena, for proposing me to give this talk on this specific topic. So I prepared this slide specifically for this workshop. So my talk is about Neumayer graphs having few hidden values. <clears throat> if you never heard what a Neumayer graph is, although I think some Russian people already work on this, don't worry, because they are just edge regular graphs having a regular click. And then I will look at when these guys have few weight values. And this is joint work with some people from Belgium, some people from China. I will mention the names whenever I introduce the results. Okay. So let's get started. Uh, this is the outline that I planned for my talk. Uh, first, I will start with an introduction to the new Maya graphs. We will also see what has been studied about them. And we will we'll also might see some results that might be might be handy for us later on for our own results. Then, as the title says, we're going to focus on new Maya graphs with few weighted values. But how few weighted values? You might wonder until what number do you want to go? So I will also justify why in this talk I'm going to focus on three, four, and work in progress five weighted values, and why don't we go farther than that? And then I will end up with some closing remarks and some open problems, since I understand that these type of workshops are also about um, yeah, proposing new ideas and open problems to, for further research. So I hope in the future I can actually uh, present the, the work in progress that we have right now on this topic as well, but on 5 So let's get started with the introduction. I normally like to start with the Sagrada Familia, which represents my hometown. I'm, I'm working in the Netherlands and in Belgium, but I'm originally Catalan from Barcelona. But uh, since I have been living already for 10 years in the Netherlands, I thought it would be good to pick something a bit more representative from the Netherlands. So I took the Dutch windmill, which fortunately has a graph called actually that windmill or friendship graph. So probably you know about this graph. And the only reason I'm picking up this graph, you will see later it has some nice properties regarding its regularity. But with this slide, what I want to introduce is that I'm going to be always talking about adjacency and values. When I count them uh, individually, so one by one, repeating, repeating multiplicity, I call them lambdas. And when I want to talk about distinct hidden values, I call them thetas. Okay. So here we don't include multiplicities. Okay, everybody know probably what a regular graph is. So it means like each vertex has equal degree k. In this case, I call it k, the degree of a net regular of a regular graph. So this is a representation. I don't know if you heard what an edge regular graph is, but it's actually a nice uh, extension. It's like uh, we consider a simple non-empty graph, and we say that it's edge regular with this triplet of parameters b, k, and lambda. If the graph has the vertices, is a regular of degree k, and we put an extra condition that is that any two adjacent vertices have exactly lambda common neighbors. Okay. And a graphic illustration of um, edge regularity could be this one. So we always have lambda common numbers. Examples of a regular graph, there are quite a lot there. But here I give you two of degree four, both of them, and lambda one. So for example, if we focus on the right one side, I think you can see my mouse. This guy and this guy are neighbors, and they only have one common uh, extra vertex, uh, one common neighbor in common. Okay. Um, why did I start with a friendship graph? Because there is a nice observation on the structure of a regular graph, that is that if you have an irregular graph with this parameter set, bk, and fix lambda to one, then we know that the close neighborhood of its vertex must be actually a friendship graph with so many panes as uh, k over two triangle in this case, okay? So in particular, the example I just introduced, one of them, here you can see it has k uh, four, so two, uh, wins from the windmill. Okay. Let me now go to the uh, coed regularity. What is that? A graph is said to be coed regular if it has the vertices, is again regular of degree k. And then what we um, assume as an extra concern for the definition is that every non-adjacent pair of vertices have exactly the same number of common neighbors that we denote with mu. So this is, for example, a representation of coed regularity. And 
obviously this together gives the concept of a strongly regular graph. You all know what it is. It has been mentioned also by Willem, by several other speakers in the, in the workshop. And this is a nice uh, description that Willem uses normally, and I like, so I also use it, Willem, I hope you don't mind. <laughs> so this is uh, the definition of strongly regular graph, means that the graph is irregular and co regular. And then we always represent it with these uh, four parameter sets, okay? We are gonna be talking a lot about the strong regular graphs because they have exactly three eigenvalues. And we also need the definition of a click. The title say regular graphs with regular clicks. So everybody probably knows what a click is. It's just a graph where, uh, well, a click in a graph is a set of pairwise edges and vertices. And the important thing here is notation wise, we are gonna be calling the size of a click, the order of a click as a C click. Sometimes I will be using S or S plus one, but whatever goes in front of the click is the order. What is a regular click? This might be maybe less, uh, less common, or maybe you didn't hear of this, of this before. So we say that a click uh, is regular if every vertex which is not in that click is adjacent to the same number of vertices inside the click. And actually this number of vertices inside the click that every vertex of the click has is called the nexus, okay? So we're gonna be saying that a click is irregular whenever the nexus is E. So we normally put the nexus in front of regularity and the order of the click in front of the click word, okay? So here I give you two examples. We have a click of size five on the first picture and then the nexus is three in this case, there is only one vertex outside, so this is obvious. But of course you can have several other vertices outside the click and then the nexus, uh, also according to this, in this case, it's two in the second picture, okay? So this is the definition of regular click. This is extremely important for this talk. What did Neumeier did regarding these edge regular graphs with regular clicks? So in the 80s, Neumeier, in earlier 80s, Neumeier studied regular clicks in edge regular graphs and certain classes of designs whose point graphs are strongly regular and contain regular clicks. However, he encountered that all the regular graphs with regular clicks that he was, uh, that he got or he studied or he classified were actually strongly regular. So then he proposed the following question in his paper from 80s. Uh, he asked, he wondered if every regular graph with regular click is actually strongly regular. Uh, so before I go, to tell you what has been done in this regard regarding this question, because this question has been answered. I want to introduce the concept of Neumeier graph because it's the title of the talk and we're gonna be carrying it over the talk, my talk also. So a Neumeier graph, after his question, he didn't name it Neumeier graphs obviously, but after his question, people in the literature start calling a Neumeier graph, a graph which is a regular, non-complete and contains a regular click. And the parameter set of Neumeier graphs is normally represented like this like uh, the triplet of the edge regularity, plus the nexus, which is E, plus the order of the click, which is S, okay? So by this uh, parameter set, NG, we denote the set of Neumeier graphs, with, which are edge regular with parameters uh, B, K, Lambda, and that contain a irregular S click. So here you see at the size of the click, now it's S, but it just goes in front of the word. And we call a strictly Neumeier graph, a Neumeier graph, which is not a strongly regular, okay? Actually, this definition is kind of analogous to what um, the DESA graphs that were introduced by Willem and co-authors. So I think also it's called strictly DESA graphs, if I'm not confused. So sometimes I'm gonna be using S for the size of the click and sometimes S plus one. It's mostly for the calculations that sometimes it's nicer when you compute the quotient matrix to put S plus one. But just that you're aware that sometimes I, I use both notations. So, okay, let's go back to the question. He asked if there is any edge regular graph with regular click, which is not having three hand values. Ah, sorry, before I go on, one more observation of Neumeier graph is that the diameter, because we will use it later and I will post a question regarding this, this observation. The diameter of a Neumeier graph is at most three, since any vertex not in the fixed regular, in a regular, in a fixed regular click is adjacent to at least one vertex of the click. Hence, the possible diameters of a strictly Neumeier graph will be two or three. And let me give you first some examples of Neumeier graphs, which are strongly regular, which are the ones that are maybe easier to, to construct. Um, for example, this uh, square grid, uh, 
uh, with S2, it's, it's known that it's a strongly regular graph with this set of parameters, nine vertices. And then we can easily detect here, for example, this, uh, there are several regular clicks, but for example, this one I put in red is just a one regular click because every vertex in, in black has exactly one neighbor in the click. So the nexus is one. And it's a click of size uh, three in this case, S is three, okay? Another classic example of Neumayer graph, which is strongly regular, is the complete uh, multipartite graph, S2 in this case, which is also known to be strongly regular graph. And in this case, the regular, the nexus is S uh, minus one, because in this example, for example, we have like three is the number of adjacencies from any vertex, which is not in the red click to the click. And S, which is in this case four, is the size of this complete graph of uh, size four. Okay, let's go back to Neumayer question. That's what I promise we would discuss. So the answer to his question is no. And we are gonna see uh, what are the existing constructions regarding this question that answer this. So the first construction took a while actually, like nobody really looked at this, or I don't know if, uh, yeah, it was maybe not a very re active research area, but then Graves and Cullen, after a talk uh, by uh, Socher in Colorado, if I remember correctly, they got interested in the topic of its regular graphs with regular clicks, and they decided to address this question by Neumayer and construct the first infinite family of strictly Neumayer graphs. If I recall correctly, there is some number theory involved in the construction and they use some cyclotomic numbers. Don't ask me too much about this because I'm not really an expert. But in their first paper on this topic, they posed two questions. The first one is like, what is the number, the minimum number of vertices such that there is a strictly Neumayer graph, a Neumayer graph, which is not a strongly regular graph. And another question is like, uh, does there exist a strictly Neumayer graph having a nexus, a, a regular click with nexus greater than one? You will see that uh, the constructions that they provide, uh, Grace and Cullen in the first paper, they all have nexus one. So they were wondering if something else could appear also as a nexus. Uh, this question was um, addressed uh, by several uh, Russian authors, uh, Sergei and Shala Kinov, and I think Sasha was also involved on this. They found, uh, they went through this, um, uh, they, they looked for Kaylee data graphs, if I understood correctly. The problem is the paper is in Russian, so I actually don't have complete information on what really happened there, but among this uh, classification of Kaylee data graphs, they found, I think, four new Maya, strictly new Maya graphs with parameters uh, 24, 8, 2, 1, and 4. So actually, I would love to see uh, how these guys are constructed. So this is strictly new graphs coming from this classification. Um, but it was a bit later in, the, in their paper in 2019 uh, that they actually construct the smallest, so they address the first question, construct the smallest new Meyer, strictly new Meyer graph, sorry, I should put it very strictly, with this parameter set. So the smaller, smaller, smallest strictly Neumayer graph has actually 16 vertices, and they also provide two new infinite families of strictly Neumayer graphs by doing some switching operation on some affine polar space of the binary field. And then also with uh, last year, the same year, uh, Graves and Cullen, I think it was in Pilsen that they also discussed with the Russian gang, they, they realized that one of these uh, strictly Neumayer graphs with 24 parameters could be actually uh, pushed further to give some infinite construction using uh, antipodal sets on distance regular graphs, certain distance regular graphs, okay. So this is a bit the overview of what has been recently done or mostly done about new Meyer graphs and new Meyer's question, okay. We realize it's all the work that has been done is mostly about uh, constructing them. So just trying to see the existence of these guys, but there is not much done regarding eigenvalues. So that's where we uh, came uh, in play. So yeah, we decided to study new Meyer graphs with two AM values and see what can we say, how can we characterize them? This was joint work with uh, Bart Bryan and Josephine Das Seheller. I always have very hard uh, issues pronouncing her name. They're both from Ghent University and then also joint work with Jack Cullen who is uh, established in, in China, in Hefei. So let me give you a bit of overview of this project, like personal history, like this project we start doing it, um, well, we didn't start this project exactly, but we were discussing this paper by Bar, by Bar where they, they give some characterizations of the strongly regular graphs using what is called intriguing sets of regular graphs. 
Intriguing sets are just regular partitions into two sets. I don't know why in incident geometry they have a different name, but it's just the same. And there was some interesting characterization there and we were just understanding it and see if that could give us yeah, some interesting open problem to work on. At that time, then Jack visited me in, in Ghent. He gave a talk about some other topic, I think it's more of a value fix. And then he told us like, we should not focus on intriguing sets, but we should focus on edge regular graphs having a regular click, which is kind of related to these uh, um, by regular sets. And then, well, he basically convinced us that there were nice open problems we could do there. And that's how this all started. And how this all continued and finished was like, uh, we also met uh, coincidentally with Bart and Jack in Rio. So we kept discussing it there. And then uh, for the last part of the project, I visited Jack in China in Hefei, and then we also finished the Foreign and Values part. So this is about the idea of the project, how it went. So let me start with our main question. We wanted to know if new Maya graphs with few distinct eigenvalues exist. We know that new Maya graphs with three distinct eigenvalues are strongly regular. I will prove and I will show you that there are no examples with four eigenvalues or distinct eigenvalues. And we will also see in a second that there are several examples of infinite families, the ones I just mentioned from other authors, of a strictly new Maya graphs that have exactly six distinct eigenvalues. So the next table that I'm gonna show is actually a nice work by a bachelor student. So it's, uh, you should be proud. I think he's attending uh, at Ghent University. He was supervised by uh, Martin the Book. And yeah, what he did is he implement all the constructions, existing constructions of strictly new Maya graphs. And this has been super useful for us also to push uh, uh, the study of new Maya graphs with few and values. So let me present the implementation he did. Uh, he basically implements all the constructions. So I just put the initials here, but this is the, the Russian team and then Gary and Jack and Gary and Jack. <clears throat> so let me give the, oh wait. So, so basically he just, uh, in this table indicates the parameter, the physical parameter sets of these guys that we know that they exist because they are constructed. And he also indicated the integral eigenvalues because the other ones were a bit ugly. And then also the number of distinct eigenvalues. So the last column shows that actually the minimum number of distinct eigenvalues that uh, follows from the known construction is six. So this actually was a bit the beginning of our story. Like, is six actually the minimum? Can we say something about four, about five, maybe? Can we know something about the expected eigenvalues? Uh, actually, yes, because if we know that a graph is regular and has uh, irregular cyclic, say C, we can always compute a very trivial quotient matrix, and we know that this quotient matrix has eigenvalues rho sum k constant and this, uh, the click minus the nexus minus one. So we know that these are also gonna be an equitable partition. These are also gonna be eigenvalues of the original graph. <clears throat> so in particular, if we look at the table that I just showed you again, we know that these eigenvalues will pop up. So we expect these eigenvalues to be there, okay? So the type of work we were interested to do in this project with uh, the Belgiums and Jack was, uh, can we give eigenvalue conditions to characterize when something, when a new Maya graph is actually strongly regular? Okay, can we say something like that? And one of the characterizations involves actually this uh, degree and the size of the, the order of the click, K and C. So here I just uh, put it in green. Obviously these guys are not strongly regular. So you will see that the result does not apply here because it is strictly new Maya graphs. But I, want, I wanted to tell you that we are just interested to find um, sufficient necessary conditions that depend on this parameter set that characterize when a, stri when a new Maya graph is actually non -stri not a strict new Maya graphs and stuff like that. That's a bit the idea of what we wanted to do. So let's go to the three eigenvalues case. <clears throat> We are going to be calling them a strongly regular new Maya graphs. I guess for obvious reasons. So we already saw an example of a strongly regular new Maya graph with this complete um, multipartite graph. So the goal is that because we know that uh, the existing new Maya graphs uh, that are known um, are not strongly regular, actually not all, as we saw in the previous constructions, we want to know, we want to find out new conditions under which a new Maya graph has exactly three distinct eigenvalues or uh, um, analogously, uh, can we say something under which extra conditions a new Maya graph is a strongly regular new Maya graph? And obviously co-irregularity is not the answer we are hoping for. <laughs> That's totally 
So regarding this question, Neumeier already did something. So he has a theorem that says that if a graph is edge regular with a regular click, and he assumes on top of that vertex transitivity and edge transitivity, then the graph is actually strongly regular. So one characterization was out there in his paper already. But what about other characterizations? So please style. And some of the results that I will use or we will use for our results uh, is this by Neumeier also. So I just posted here that you know that he did this as well, although we are kind of reproving it somehow, but okay. So we have a Neumeier graph with this set of parameters. Then he proved that uh, the following happens. The maximum size of a click is S and all regular clicks in the Neumeier graph need to be irregular clicks. And then the regular clicks in the numeric graphs are precisely the regular clicks of size, the clicks of size S of order S. So let's start with the first uh, characterization we give. The first characterization has a combinatorial flavor. So we will have to define some parameters in order to actually state the, the characterization. And first of all, I need exactly some preliminary results. So we assume first an uncompleted regular graph with this triplet. And we are going to define the order, the size of the click S, I'm going to be calling S from now on, like this number, which depends on, on the triplet of an edge regular graph, V, K, and lambda. Uh, it's important to note that uh, you can prove actually, or you can characterize complete multipartite graphs by this uh, equation that I indicated in red, when it's larger equal than zero, when it's zero. So we prove actually, I mean, I'm not giving all the technical details, but we have, we need some preliminary lemmas that show that this thing has real roots, et cetera, et cetera. So for example, we also need to prove that B plus K minus two K is different than zero when it's not complete multipartite. Uh, in the same line, we define the nexus as this expression regarding the order of the click, the degree and the number of vertices B. And then we, we prove some propositions that uh, actually we reprove what Neumeier did because this was already known as a show in the previous theorem by Neumeier. So if we suppose that a complete multi, the graph is not a complete multipartite, because then we cannot define the size of the click like that, then we can prove that every click of the graph uh, has order at most S plus one, and equality happens if and only if that click is actually a regular click. Hmm. And then it means that in that case, every vertex outside the click is exactly adjacent to the nexus, to the E vertices in the click. Um, this was already observed by Neumeier, as I mentioned to you. So we don't spend too much time on this. You can do the same for bipartite graphs. So then it's I, multipartite, uh, complete multipartite graphs. So then it's very trivial because E is exactly S for key ST. <clears throat> but the same result holds, of course. I mean, remember that these guys are just as strong as regular. Eh? So then it's... So for the combinatorial characterization, I'm going to state it. I'm not going to prove it. I will just give you some ingredients we need in the proof, but the proof was quite technical and a bit tedious. So we're not going to go through all the details here. Uh, okay, so we know that if we have a new Maya graph, there must exist some regular clicks of order S plus one by the previous result. And what we characterize is a family of strongly new Maya, regular new Maya graphs that uh, the theorem is the following. If we have a new Maya graph with a certain property and the property is that every click of order E plus one, remember the nexus I defined before, is containing a click of order S plus one, then that new Maya graph is a strongly relevant. Roughly speaking, this would mean that if we have a sufficient, sufficiently large click that can be extended to a maximal click, this would be sufficient condition for a new Maya graph to be strongly relevant. Some proof ingredients. I mean, obviously it's not gonna be strict proof, but at least the idea. Uh, we uh, start assuming that uh, from the theorem, we assume that if we have a new Maya graph with this property, that every sufficiently large click is containing a maximum click, then uh, the graph can be proven that has diameter two in this case. And remember that new Maya graphs always have diameter two or three. Then we also need to show that the number of uh, certain size S plus one clicks uh, through an edge is constant, the same for vertex to a vertex. And then using the famous paper, we start with this project, uh, one of the results where they use these intriguing sets or regular bipartitions um, for graphs, regular graphs of diameter two. We also use that to actually conclude that the graph must be strongly regular. If you impose all this, you can prove all these things. Okay. So that's a bit the overview of the proof, not a strict proof, but at least the idea. Question is like, 
are there new myographs having this property that we require for this characterization? So for example, yes, for the, again, the same example, like uh, the complete multipartite graphs, they hold this case, this uh, condition. But there are also some other examples we could find also by a computer like collinearity graphs of, of some finite generalized quadrangles or finite polar spaces. So this is not super rare thing to actually impose, to force the new Maya graph to be strongly regular. Okay, the second characterization used uh, Aachen values. It was a bit technical as well, but I will try to I will try to convey a bit the idea of why we define and what we, why we use what we use. I'm not giving the proof of this one. I will give the proof of the four Aachen values, hopefully, if I have time. But at least I want to convey a bit the idea. The goal of this part then is to characterize new Maya graphs that actually we realized we could do a bit more general and we could characterize regular graphs, give a new criteria of when a regular graph is actually strongly regular. So it came out a bit surprising that you could do it more generally with the right definitions. So we relax the previous condition of requiring edge regularity and regular click, and we just assume connected and regular graph. So it's not strictly speaking about new Maya, but obviously it will apply. <clears throat> so assume a graph on at least three vertices, which is not complete multipartite, and then we define the average degree of the vertices of the graph as this bar K. So now I'm gonna start introducing these uh, algebraic definitions with bars in, for the parameters that we saw before. The bar lambda is um, just the average of lambda somehow. Like, uh, what else do we need? Ah, yeah. So the main idea for this part is that uh, we introduce a quadratic polynomial that must be satisfied by the size of the clique. That's the main idea. Uh, and we can prove that this polynomial has two real roots, one negative and one positive, and the positive root of this polynomial we denote it by the size of the clique, S bar, okay, which is this expression, which we also need to prove several technical lemmas to avoid uh, strange things happening, but everything works out. So the fact that all regular cliques have the same size was already proved by Neumeier, as we saw, but we could not find in his original paper any quadratic equation that was mentioned or used somehow. And I, I don't know if you remember, but from, for the previous characterization, we ordered the analogous definition of size of a clique without the bars, because we were in the case of Neumeier graph. We also need some extra definitions, algebraic definitions. Maybe the most important ones here are actually these two, this um, uh, titas M and theta capital M. And you will see in a second why these are key ingredients in this uh, algebraic uh, characterization of spectra, I of strongly regular graphs. Uh, actually for the case when a graph is strongly regular, then these definitions that we introduce with bars are just the classic definitions, normal meaning of a strongly regular graph. And actually then K and these um, restricted Aachen values, uh, thetas, are actually the Aachen values of a strongly regular graph. So I hope you can already start seeing what we, we try to do here. But in a general graph, not necessarily strongly regular, we can interpret all these parameters as these algebraic definitions, depending on the bar, car, K bar, the click size bar defined and mu bar. And note that this mu bar is not actually the average of mu's. That's also important to note. A bit more intuition behind is like the main idea is that we saw that um, by the trivial equitable partition on the click and the rest, we already get two Aachen values for free somehow. But what about a different partition? If you take this, for example, this distance partition that you hang one vertex, the neighborhood of one vertex and everything else, then you also get something. You get K as a trivial Aachen value, but you get also a quadratic polynomial that has two roots that are gonna be the values of this equitable partition. So somehow the whole thing came from this, uh, the whole thing started with this partition. So actually for this polynomial, which are the non-trivial roots of this second partition I just show you, you can prove, I didn't, I'm not gonna prove it here, but you can prove that these guys, the Hemelius need to be exactly these uh, thetas that we define in this way, okay? And this gives already a connection between Aachen values and this uh, uh, parameter set of a graph, the V, K, lambda, mu, et cetera. More results that we need for the spectral characterization, characterization I, before I can state it, is that uh, there was this result by Svetkovic, Rollison, and Simi that proves that uh, the largest Aachen value of a graph is at least the average K with the average degree 
with equality if and only if the graph is regular. So this already gave us a new door to start um, exploring this a bit further. So you can prove that if the graph is regular, then this inequality holds. And then you can also prove that if this inequality holds, and theta mean is just the smallest second value of the graph. So it means if the graph is regular and theta mean is the smallest second value, then equality between this algebraic description of theta and the smallest second value implies that the graph needs to be strongly regular. And this is not a trivial result to prove, but it's, yeah, it gives very nice, very nice algebraic characterization, which is this one. So we basically give um, a characterization that says that if the minimum eigenvalue value of your graph is a smaller or equal than this theta m, and theta m was defined minus k divided by s, equality on this means that the graph needs to be stronger regular. So obviously for the ones I put in, in green before on the table for strict, strictly new Meyer graphs, this is not true because they are not strongly regular. But this gives a criteria, what I wanted to say, like this gives a nice easy criteria to check if something, a new Meyer graph is a stronger regular. Okay, and then you can also prove the analogous using the same ideas <coughs> for the maximum value of the starting graph regular graph. Important here, thing here is like we use the second uh, part, so the, max, the one that involves inequality with the maximum values to rule out the four values case. And we also use the first one to rule out in work in progress uh, new Maya graphs with fixed smallest value minus n. So this is going to be useful a bit later. A result with a similar flavor. So after we submit the paper, Edwin uh, contacted us with some uh, nice feedback and nice interesting remarks he had. And one of them was that there was some result by himself and Hammers from 97 that also gives a characterization of a strongly regular graphs, but using a different technique, the question matrix of a local distance partition somehow. So it was a bit more local type of result when you look at the statement, but similar type of characterization somehow. Okay, so we also work on some characterizations using the ratio bound. I think the ratio bound has been introduced many times in this workshop, so I will not spend too many details on this. Maybe the only thing I would like to say is that it was originally proved by Del Sarte for the strongly regular, by Hoffman for regular, and by Hammers to, for general graphs. And if you want to know more about the history of this bound, um, as Kulen already mentioned, Willem just uh, submitted a paper that I think is already accepted in LEA about uh, the history of the Hoffman ratio bound. Many people were all confused on which reference should we add every time we use this bound. So, and we are gonna call a click or a co-click that holds the bound, Adel Sarte or Hoffman click or co-click. Okay. So if I talk about clicks normally and strongly regular, I will just call Del Sarte click. So the first characterization uses the ratio bound for a co-click. So, but I will focus on the second characterization because it's the one that uses the Del Sarte click. It's a bit easier maybe, but they are very equivalent. So we basically say, assume you have an uncompleted regular graph, then we show two equivalences between being strongly regular. So having three values of the new Meyer graph and when, um, and attainance or uh, attainance on the Hoffman bound, when the Hoffman bound is attained with equality. So the one I would like to focus a bit more is this one. These equivalences that says that a new Meyer graph is strongly regular, if and only if the start click bound holds for uh, the graph. That is this expression I have here. And we, this is very important because we are gonna be using it all the time when we rule out the case of four, because this gives us a criteria to say that a strictly new Meyer graph factor cannot hold the start click bound. So it gives a strict inequality when you want to maybe prove something by contradiction later on regarding the values. Okay. Let me give you a bit of the proof idea. So we start having a new Maya graph and we want to show this. We define already S and E in the first part of this talk, in the combinatorial part. And we also saw that there is this result that was proven originally by Neumayer that says that every click um, that has order at most S plus one, an equality occurs, or if and only if that's actually a regular click. And because we are assuming a new Maya graph, for us, for us it's going to be with equality. So we first suppose that the graph is strongly regular. We can show, I'm not showing it here, but we can show from the algebraic part, the previous section, that the three eigenvalues values need to be these three uh, guys. And you can already see that these two come from the trivial equitable partition and this one from the third partition on three parts. So if we apply this to the Del Sarte bound, these eigenvalues, values, we get 
that the delta arte bound is S plus one. And since we know that the click bound holes is at most S plus one, as we calculate for every click on the graph, we indeed see that uh, the delta arte click bound holes for the graph, which is a strongly regular. Okay. And the other direction is also similar flavor. Like we suppose we start with now a delta arte click bound that holes on the graph. Since the click is a regular click, then we know it needs to be actually maximal, so it holds with equality, implying that the minimum Eichen value is at least minus k over s. But then by using the characterization of a strongly regular graph, the previous characterization using the minimum and the maximum Eichen value, we know that this needs to hold with equality if and only if it's a strongly regular, and therefore our graph must be strongly regular. Okay, okay we also gave another characterization of three Eichen values, Neumaya graphs with three Eichen values. I will not spend too much time on this because I might be running out of time, but at least tell you what the statement is and the consequence. So we know that the graph is work regular if for all non-integer, in negative integer, we have diagonal, constant diagonal entries on the power of the adjacency matrix, which counts closed walks of fixed length uh, R. But I don't know if you're familiar with the definition of T work regular, um, the, a graph with certain diameter D is T walk regular for T at most the diameter. If the number of walks of a given length between any two vertices depends only on the distance between these two vertices, and of course this distance is at most the T. So for T0, this is actually the classic definition of walk regularity. And for T, the diameter, this coincides with one of the possible definitions of distance regular graph. So they kind of actually generalize distance regular graph. And one of the results we use in our proof is some algebraic characterizations using principal idempotence by Dalfo, Garriga, and Fiol. So they study T work regularity and they give some characterizations of when, uh, some, when a graph is actually T work regular using mostly the spectrum and idempotence. So our result is like if you have a graph which is one work regular and this graph has a regular click, then that graph must be a strongly regular graph. This is a bit in the flavor of what Neumeyer did, but we kind of generalize it. He did, he required vertex and edge transitivity. So there is an automorphism between vertices and edges at the same time. But since vertex and edge transitivity implies one work regular, uh, we actually need a less stronger assumption when stating the results. So kind of, we kind of extend this result. And the corollary of this thing is like, it's not possible to construct the Maya graph as a relation graph of a symmetric association scheme that does not come from a, from a graph with three Eichen values. And this actually matches with what comes next when we uh, attack the four Eichen value case. We'll see why, because we, the first approach we had for the four Eichen values case was to go through Edwin's uh, thesis and try to find one of the um, graphs coming from this uh, symmetric association schemes hoping to find a new graph with four Eichen values, but actually that was not possible, as now we understand what it is. And in this uh, project, we also characterize uh, uh, strongly, uh, strongly new Maya graphs, so new Maya graphs, uh, i sorry, new Maya graphs with three Eichen values, so strongly new Maya graphs having small second value being minus two, so we can give the exact classification here. We say that, um, well, we could prove that uh, the line graph of a new Maya graph needs to be one of the following families. And in particular, you show that uh, those are stronger regular graphs. But more interesting is like using this characterization that already appear in the book BCN. It was already known that uh, connected regular graphs with the smallest Eichen value minus two, if the graph on top of that is a regular, which is what we are kind of assuming all the time, then needs to be strongly regular or the line graph of a regular triangle free graph. So using this and our previous uh, preliminary result, we can show that every new Maya graph which has the smallest fixed second value minus two needs to be strongly regular. And then you, this is what we are trying to extend at the moment. We are trying to see if we can actually push this further and prove a bit more, like minus three or minus M in general. Uh, okay, um, so this is the outline of the results we just saw. We proved several, several characterizations and there are some interesting consequences regarding when a new Maya graph is actually strongly regular, so it has three Eichen values. But let's move on to the four Eichen values, looking at the time. 
So the first non-successful approach, as I already mentioned, when we were trying to find candidates was going through Edwin's paper or thesis and then try to find out if one of the uh, listed uh, uh, graphs coming from these three class association schemes uh, could be a candidate to be an Umaya graph with four, exactly four disintegration values, but that was not successful search. And now it's clear why, actually. So what happens? Um, well, and then also maybe let me mention here that regular graphs with four distant taking values were studied by Edwin Van Damme. But uh, can, can we say something about numeric graphs with four distant taking values? So a bit more like assuming edge regularity now. And I must say also that uh, lots of inspiration for the proof of the four taking values case came from Edwin's approach to the four taking values case on regular graphs. So we could prove actually that uh, there are no numeric graphs with four distant taking values. And let me give you an idea because it's not so difficult to at least see the pattern of the proof, like the structure. So it goes by contradiction. Suppose that there exists an Umaya graph with exactly four AM values. By the equitable, trivial equitable partition, we know that K and S minus S, so the size of the click minus the nexus, need to be AM values of it. We don't know which ones, but they need to be AM values. But actually, we can prove a bit more. We can prove that S minus C, the non trivial AM value of this equitable partition, needs to be the third distinct AM value. And needs to be larger or equal than zero, obviously. And then what we also use, a classic result when you work with regular graphs and eigenvalues, is this uh, Hoffman polynomial type thing that um, you know that this um, expression needs to hold for a graph with these eigenvalues, <clears throat> a regular graph with eigenvalues. So in particular for our case, n is three because it's the non-trivial eigenvalues, not counting k. So you get an expression that gives you a constant times the all one adjacent, uh, yeah, the all one matrix. J is the all one matrix. So you get a linear combination of powers of the adjacent matrix equals some constant times uh, the all one matrix. That's basically the idea. But we know we know that there is some ordering on the hem values, <clears throat> so we can uh, push that a bit further. And then what we are going to do next is like what uh, we did is like we look at the diagonal entries of both sides of this uh, expression. And then we found some, some feasibility conditions that had to be satisfied, basically. So after working out the feasibility conditions and applying those hard bound for a strictly new Maya graph, so we know that for a strictly new Maya graph, new Maya graph, which is not strongly regular, the del bound, click bound cannot hold with equality. So you get a strict inequality there. And you know that the smallest second value is actually minus one second value is minus K over S you basically get a contradiction. So this is roughly speaking, but it's an idea. So after we submitted our paper, one of the remarks Edwin uh, brought to us was that he had an alternative proof, a bit shorter actually, to rule out the four and values case. So quite short, quite much shorter, I think. So, oh, sorry, this is a bit of a repetition, I keep saying. So let me now move on to work in progress. So until now, I present work that has been accepted in designs, uh, codes, and cryptography. And now we are pushing the case of five eigen values. We want to see if we are able to construct new Maya graphs with five eigen values or to rule out five eigen values case. And we are also focusing on new Maya graphs with fixed small eigen value because uh, you saw we had some characterizations where the smallest eigen value was involved. So that, that's going to be handy actually for the coming part. This is total work joint uh, work in progress, important to say in progress, because we started this one month ago. So we still don't have many results on this, but we have the hope that we will manage to eventually say something interesting. And this is joint work with Martin the Book, who recently joined Eindhoven University and with Jack Cullen again. So the five taken values case, uh, things that one can observe, uh, this is not too deep, but well, it's something you can use in the proof of the five taken values trying to kill the case of five million values, is that a net regular graph with five distant taking values needs to be work regular. So we list the taking values like this, and on trivial lambda one to lambda four. Sorry, because not before I call them, I think titas, and now I'm calling lambdas. But the main idea is that you again apply is a regular graph, so work regular is regular, so you apply the Hoffman polynomial again. You get some nice expression regarding powers of A3, A2, et cetera. Then we know if the graph is regular, uh, the closed walks of fixed length to need to be constant, obviously. 
but we also know because we're assuming its regularity is a bit more than what Edwin assumed in his paper. Like, then the power of th the the third power of the Jensen matrix is also having constant diagonal, and you can calculate that number. So using this type of polynomial on the matrices, you see that all the powers of uh, A have constant diagonal. So it follows that the graph is well regular. So somehow you have well regularity for free when you work with new Maya graphs with five percent values. That's the main idea here. The only thing we have so far for the five eigenvalues values case is an upper bound on the number of closed walks of length four. That's what we could find out. Uh, the way we found this bound is exactly the same approach we had for the four eigenvalues values case. So we use the Hoffman polynomial. We wrote down the feasibility conditions look at, looking at the main diagonal of both sides of the uh, Hoffman polynomial equation. And we also use the Sart bound, uh, knowing that the graph, the new Maya graph is actually a strictly new Maya graph. So the del Sart bound gives you a strict inequality. And this is the number we get. We are still not sure how good or bad this bound is. We are trying to, oh, we had the idea we should actually check this, uh, this upper bound on the known new Maya graphs on six second values to see how restrictive it is. We still need to do that. So I don't want to mention too much about that because I'm not really sure how good or bad this is. But you get a bound using the same approach as for the four eigenvalues. values. And what is the main challenge? Why we cannot kill five eigenvalues? values? That was our hope. We wanted to kill the five eigenvalues values case because so far there are no constructions with five eigenvalues values out there. So the main challenge here is that the freedom is just too much, too large. Before for the four eigenvalues values case, we only had two non-trivial, two things that we were not sure about the value. So we had two eigenvalues values that uh, could be anything. But now we have three. Remember that you have the um, trivial eigenvalue k and you have the size of the clique minus e also as an eigenvalue around. So th those are fixed, those, th those need to be around, but what about the other one? So the freedom here is quite uh, big. So we are really not sure if we can actually rule out the case of five eigenvalues. Maybe someone can find a construction, I don't know. So this is still open. This is the only thing we have for five eigenvalues. So there is much more freedom in this. And for fixed smallest eigenvalue, what we managed to prove is that if we have a new Maya graph with uh, fixed smallest eigenvalue minus the M, then the nexus is at most power of uh, five fifth of that eigenvalue, an absolute value, plus lots of terms, like uh, smaller terms. Okay. Uh, maybe I, I want to give you a very rough idea, a very general overview of how do we prove this thing? So the first step is that we want, we, we find a lower bound on K, on the degree of the gra new Maya graph, which is about uh, S square, size of the click uh, square. So the proof idea is very simple actually, it's just technical but simple. And then we use the, the bound, the del start click bound for the characterization we did with new Maya graphs. And then since it's a strict new Maya graph because it's not having three hand values, we know that that bound holds with a strict inequality. So you get this. So the main idea or the main hope here is like, let's get a contradiction using several inequalities falling from the previous results and also from calculations. And these two things that I'm listing here, they come from two tools. The first tool I already mentioned is that uh, the characterization we had of strongly new Maya graphs using AM values. Well, actually the characterization we had of regular graphs being strongly regular, so it was a bit more general. Um, so using that right away, you get this bound on the size, the order of a click. So this is the second inequality I list before. And the second tool we use is a result, very nice result that Jack presented on Monday, I think, that is an improvement of the Lazard bound. So they assume that if you have a certain induced subgraph containing of a complete graph with an extra vertex outside adjacent to exactly the same number of vertices inside the click, and we call this graph HAT, they prove an inequality that relates the smallest eigenvalue value of a graph with that induced subgraph on your big graph. So this is actually very nice because this is what new Maya graphs have somehow. So we can use this nicely in our set setting. So we also use this. Actually, this should be the first tool and the other one, the second tool. So let me finish my talk with some uh, closing remarks, mostly open problems actually. So my main interest at the moment is to prove or disprove the, existing, the existence of new Maya graphs with five distinct eigenvalues. values. Um, we are not sure how much can we do there, but we are thinking like maybe we can um, 
uh, restrict a bit more the search by fixing a smaller second value minus three. And then at least we can use the other bounds and see if we can kill something there. But of course, ideally, it would be better to just prove existence or an existence of five in general. This is an interesting question. Maybe it's not too hard to answer, but we could not find any counterexample here or any construction. So do walk regular Neumayer graphs have always diameter two? We know that there are Neumayer graphs which have diameter three, strictly Neumayer graphs having diameter three. Some of them appear, I think, in um, Evans' thesis. I don't know if they also appear in some other paper. But for sure they do exist, but uh, we check walk regularity and they were not walk regular. So we cannot find any counterexample. So everything that is out there as a strictly new graphs holds to be, the ones that have the emitter two, hold to be walk regular. So is it something going on there or is it just, uh, can we find a counterexample to this? So as I mentioned, examples of new graphs having the diameter three are known, at least some I saw in Evans' thesis, but they are, those are not walk regular. And the other ones on diameter two are always work regular. More open problems, find new constructions of strictly new Maya graphs, obviously, like things that are not strongly regular. I mean, this is a big question, but uh, more specifically, are there strict new Maya graphs with the nexus not being a power of two? In the cons construction by the second paper by the Russian, by the uh, Sergei Evans and Panasenko, they give two generalizations of the strictly new Maya graphs, uh, but all of them are powers of two. So do new Maya graphs with three regular clicks exist? That's open. And it's also a very interesting question. So here, here I can mention actually, like if you look at the nexus of the existing constructions, you see like this is the one, most of them have nexus one actually, unfortunately. So, okay. I'm not sure if this is doable. I mean, if something interesting can be done here, but it seems to me like there is some flavor, analogous flavor between these DESA graphs and in Maya graphs. So can we find some characterizations for DESA graphs in the style of the presented ones? When are new Maya graphs DESA? When, which DESA graphs are new Maya? And yeah, the last question is also very interesting. Like, can we show anything about strict new Maya graphs with two mu's? Because most of the constructions that we saw have exactly two mu's. So that's, yeah. Maybe can we characterize them or can we say something about them? And this is interesting because it's, of course, as close as a new Maya graph can be to a strongly regular graph. Um, we saw several characterizations, characterizations of, of new Maya graphs being strongly regular, but we don't know too much about characterizations of new Maya graphs having two mu's. So that would be also very interesting to know. So if you want to know more about specifically the first part, three eigen values and four eigen values, you can check out this paper. And I would also like to use this time, I hope Sasha doesn't mind, to advertise a position in Eindhoven. So if someone has any good candidate in mind, please don't hesitate to forward the announcement. And the position is in algebraic graph theory. So it's really the topic of the workshop. And that was all from my side. So if you have any questions, please feel free. Okay, uh, thank you, Ida, for your very impressive and interesting talk. Um, so does anybody have any questions or comments? I ask a question. Yeah. yeah. So Ida, um, thanks for the nice talk. Uh, so uh, considering the question about five distinct eigenvalues, yeah. Um, did you try to generate some list of maybe feasible parameters? Is that possible uh, somehow? We didn't actually, but it would, I mean, it could be possible. Let's regular, regular click and, and see the, I mean, the feasibility conditions that need to be guaranteed. No, we didn't do that approach. Okay. Yeah. But it yeah. makes sense to try in this. Yeah, yeah that might be helpful. Yeah. Certainly, if you add maybe a smallest eigenvalue, uh, at Maybe's least the... minus three. Yeah. yeah. That might be useful. Yeah, that's a good one indeed. Yeah, thanks, Edwin. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, any other <clears throat> questions or comments? Well, I actually have many comments and questions that maybe we can discuss it later. <laughs>
I'd like to comment on one uh, question uh, from the previous, uh, maybe, yeah. Can you, can you please show the last slide? The open questions? This one about desert graphs. So this is, uh, so you mentioned that I was somehow involved into this activity around uh, Neumar. Yeah. But this is exactly uh, how I was involved. I mean, when I learned about that uh, construction by uh, Gary and, and Jack, uh, I asked Sergey to, to check whether there are uh, Neumar graphs uh, among uh, desert graphs. Oh, yeah. So there are actually desert graphs, which are Neumar graphs. Right, but have they been characterized somehow? Like, is there some theoretic characterization or is it just a list of, is a classification? I mean, I didn't read the paper, it's in Russian, that, that was my main issue. Well, I would like to know more what exactly has been done. With... And so your, your, your goal uh, is to prove, uh, I mean, when, 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 you, when you talk about um, Neumar graphs with fixed smallest eigenvalue. So your final goal would be to prove something like uh, Neumeier theorem for Neumeier graphs. I mean, that there are finitely many. Uh, yeah. yeah. The, 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 the very long goal would be to classify them, of course. But yeah, maybe you need to assume very large degree or very large sales. Or... Yeah, I don't think, I mean. But in Neumeier theorem, we have several infinite uh, classes. So what? could be yeah. the analogs in, in this case. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not sure what else, I mean, what this would provide extra for the classification. And I'm not sure how uh, restrictive the conditions that we could prove or we prove are. For that. So I still don't have a good feeling of what uh, can we get there. I mean, we're still playing around a bit with the <laughs> information we have and that we could prove. 